All right. So next topic is actually the chapter on signals. All right. Let's see. What do I have here? Ooh, wow. So a brief summary of what the digital signals actually are all about. Um, wait a minute, I need another kind of another kind of view here. Yeah, that'll be better. So I'm using whiteboard because it actually helps me going through the stuff in logical order. Nothing more than that. I actually, well, a few years back when I started uh, teaching this, my favorite topic again, uh, I made these uh, nice slides with the Google Slides and then started going through those way too fast and nobody understood the thing, including me. So I'm trying to do it better this way. So, uh, um, yeah, what digital signal pro processing is, is all about, there's one example, well, it could be also analog, but it's a voice recording process, example. So, uh, basically, we have a sound source, here is a, a cat saying meow, and then there's a voice recorder and a uh, dog with things of bone for some reason, listening. Ha! I have no idea what I was talking about, but anyway, how the process goes. So we need actually some hardware. Let me put that one, that one there first and explain it through. Okay. So digital signal processing, what it, where the signal comes from. We have that microphone or some other sensor or thermometer, whatever that is. You know, the, this signal is very small. So at that point, we have tiny signal. And if it's, for example, on, on a, a dynamic microphone, it, it's on both sides of zero volts. Very small. Okay, then we have this A to D converter. You, you probably have had that those in, in your laboratory already, which is usually on unipolar input voltage, meaning that it has the uh, reference level at the middle. Okay, so how to fit this one into this range? You need a gain to amplify it. So after that amplifier, you have the same thing, but oops, not that big, <laughs> but bigger. After that, um, I'm not fitting into my picture now. So amplification, amplifier, here, which means that the, it just amplifies the signal magnitude, and basically uh, you can there have the uh, level shifter. So after that one, you would fit the same uh, range of the signals. Okay. Uh, after this one, you basically usually need the anti-aliasing filter to get rid of the two high frequency components on our original signal. And then you have some, say, smoother changing signal, which doesn't have the problems with the aliasing anymore. But basically, this could have this kind of fast 
uh, 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 signal peaks in voice signal those could be for example uh, coming from your switch power supply nearby and that induces the uh, noise into the sensor the this this one actually will be in the signal until the uh, low pass filter then a next step would be sample hold okay it will be signal is sampled at some point meaning that maybe hold sampling means that uh, after this you have only the uh, data at certain times okay um yeah so data appears only on those time uh, values so for example here here there and so on this will be sample signal um, good this is not digitized signal yet because these values can have any value so this way it's a discrete time but on on the value scale it's it can have any value so it's analog signal it is samples analog signal and uh, then the magic happens on the uh, quantization so if we have a a to d converter the output of that A to D converter actually is um, is fixing the values at certain level. So here we have the sample time TS, but here we have the quantization step size Q. Okay, so only at those levels. This will be messy, but that, that's a little bit uh, clearer picture. And still sampled in time, but now we can only have these values at certain level. Okay. So basically, the real value would, would be somewhere around the uh, plus minus half of the quantization step size on either side, ideally. Okay, this signal is the digitized signal. We started from very small signal, ended up having a digitized value. Okay, in electronics, well, this is usually done on the analog, uh, analog uh, preamp section. This is actually done within the codec, meaning HUD converter. Uh, sometimes everything is within one single chip, but all those uh, functionalities are more or less in this. Uh, this way yes um and the same thing on the slide so showing also uh, what the signal is and when so we have the analog signal on the left that's something that you would observe with the oscilloscope okay then we have the uh, a sampled signal meaning the discrete time continuous value right here and the digital signal is discrete time still and quantized value signal um, let's see and there's a cat sampling 
sampling actually is it looks easy well it is easy but uh, fundamentally uh, sampling means that you usually have a uh, fixed sampling rate variable sampling rate systems are pain and the only way you can actually uh, uh, do any say design you force first design it in, in, in fix sampling rate and then do the uh, multivariate sampling system afterwards by mathematical modeling but anyways so so we have sampling rate fs which means that the sampling interval is then one or uh, over ts okay so that sampling time is ts it is same as one over f s typical sampling rates 44.1 kilo samples per second. That's so-called CD quality sampling rate. Um, mathematically, basically, it's nothing else than you have a, an index running. Okay, we have an index running here. So, for example, that would be tiny index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or so on. So we just fix, uh, for example, if that was x, then this point here is x, uh, x at point zero, x at point one, and so on. It's just the value of the signal evaluated at index time, the uh, sampling time. Which then also means that then you can put this one on table well, that looks like a the first value on a, a, a C type table, right? For example, double X. And what is the uh, size of it? That would be on C, C language code. It will work. And now we have a method to find actually the uh, corresponding time value from the table. So uh, then there's on the sampling, uh, you might also already know that this is called Shannon's theorem, meaning that you need to have at least two samples uh, for each signal period. Okay, in here, um, that's the full period of the signal and it needs at least two samples. Those two. As you can see, it's not enough. It never is. Two samples per signal period is not enough. It must be more than that, for example, uh, three samples. Okay. But anyways, if it uh, if there's less, then it leads to aliasing. So on the blue, it would be an analog signal, and uh, then we have on those red. Those those are the sampling times. Way too slow sampling rate goes into this kind of. So after the sampling, you would think that okay, the signal looks sinusoid with way too. Uh, uh, slow frequency. It's a lookalike, alias. Okay. And then the digital signal, basically, the quantization mathematically looks like that one. We are not dealing with the quantized stuff on digital signal processing. Uh, on this class. Uh, the quantization error is uh, basically it just needs more bits and that's it. If you, if you, have, uh, um, if you see quantization noise as a big issue, then you just add bits. That's it. Basically, you need to have the signal to quantization noise ratio, which should be better than your signal to noise ratio of the original signal. And there's a formula. 
All right. No more on that one. And then the uh, example on the audio signal. Okay, human ear. Roughly from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz uh, 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 frequency range. I used to have 22.1, not anymore. <laughs> it goes down by the edge. I think it's 18 and a half kilohertz is the maximum frequency I can hear. You, you, you can still, you're lucky, you're young, you're, unless you have been listening to loud music. My uh, reduction on the uh, those, that higher level is actually due to the fact that Finland is a country for heavy metal. I played in one band <laughs> at your age. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. But anyways, CD quality PCM pulse code modulation, meaning just the values on table, right? Like here. <laughs> that would be pulse code modulation. 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate. It's not such an accident that we call the CD quality PCM signal as that sampling rate. Um, okay, listening music, uh, depending on what kind of music. The more modern music, you need only 20 dB since you only. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, but, anyways, uh, so basically, we can cover, we should cover about 80 dB. Uh, the, the uh, signal to noise ratios, or actually the dynamic range of a music recording uh, for a high fidelity music recording should be around 80 dB at least. That comes from the physics for the, of the ear. And that makes basically that uh, you need to have the signal to quantization noise ratio at least that month. Well, you need more than 13 bits. And that's why CD quality PCM signal is has 16 bit resolution. It gives you better, better than 80 dB uh, signal to quantization noise. And it's two bytes. This would be one byte and five bits. Not what? All right. Um, let me take a picture of that, and uh, then we go to this simplest signals ever, what I call fundamental signals. So, um, actually, I, I could do those from here. So in uh, um, the first fundamental signal what I have here is the uh, unit impulse. Basically, it's a discrete Dirac delta, sometimes called like that. Uh, it's okay. It's not sampled Dirac delta. Dirac delta at zero goes to infinity. So that's not good signal to sample, unless you have a low pass filter on Dirac delta. It means that basically this one gives the energy of one after integration. So fundamentally, this is same as integral. So in a, that sense, this uh, Dirac, uh, this Dirac delta is basically sample, but it's basically sampled energy of that signal. Okay. And it's used for similar purposes. Although in uh, continuous time signals, direct delta is more or less, it's, it's not too practical, uh, since you cannot uh, produce a direct delta in electronics. It would take a infinitely short time, and uh, you know the, the voltage would be gazillion volts and more, infinite volts. 
it's uh, more than lightning voltage, but very short time. So energy only one. Okay, um, that's why in in the laboratory usually these uh, system responses are compared to step function. All right, so unit step functions, which is a direct uh, uh, sampled uh, heavy side function. Heavy side meaning that, well, it's that kind of step function. And that you probably have uh, uh, experienced on the laboratories, uh, analog electronics laboratories or signals laboratories. You have RC uh, uh, filter, for example, and you hit it with a, a square wave, then you notice the, uh, the, uh, how it smooths the, the, uh, or changes the uh, signal shape. And then you compare it with the Laplace transform stuff. Ugly. I would forget that one too, if I could. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, but anyways, um, unit step function, uh, sampled heavy side, uh, and this unit step and unit impulse have a relationship like that one. So wait a minute. This is wrong. K from zero. Okay, that should. There's an error here. K from zero would be that one. So so basically, this is combined by uh, the the, uh, the taking each of these. Uh, deltas and adding them together. So it's delta plus uh, uh, delta, uh, delete delta, delete by two delta, delete by three delta. Okay. Or the delta function is actually this minus delete one. So if you take this one and then uh, subtract that part, you will get just the delta function. Okay, um, just for fun, one uh, fundamental signal feature would be also the periodicity. So continuous signal is periodic if you can find a value or shift that the signal is actually repeating itself. As shortest of those is base period. Okay, that, that's just the plain mathematics. But goes, to, but on the um, sampling actually changes the thing a little, uh, quite a lot, since now you have to find not just any value, but actually an index value. It has to be a, 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 a the um, integral number as the base period. So if you sample a perfect sinusoid wave, you get really lucky if your sampled signal would be a periodic after the sampling in mathematics a way. Uh, this has some, how it shows up actually, it's at the, on, on the spectrum level. Uh, but anyways, the uh, periodic city is, is a little bit uh, funny, funny thing on, on, uh, on these sample signals. That's a reminder. Yeah, as you can see here, this was the uh, on, on continuous time. Definitely, this, this is the uh, periodic, periodic signal. At those points, it's exactly the same. But here, look only the red samples here. That is close, but not quite as that one. So it's not periodic anymore, or the base period is much longer. 
All right. Frequency space. Fourier series. You have seen those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ah. Uh, just a reminder. When you have a, 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 a periodic signal, then you can uh, represent that one as a frequency component. But, okay, random signals. Uh, randomness is actually quite a uh, natural thing. There are several so sources for the random signal. That's why I, we, we also go through and uh, 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 analyze some of these signals, try to reduce the noise. But anyways, this is a reminder that noise is everywhere. Natural sources like wind, wind noise in microphone. It's uh, quite a lot of hours that engineers has done to actually reduce the amount of uh, wind noise in these microphones. It, it's, that's, the, that's basically how you separate good microphone from not so good microphone. It's not the microphone itself. Microphone itself is very simple to make. It's a dynamic microphone requires a magnet and a coil. Coil is uh, glued into a membrane that actually starts vibrating when, when there's a sound pressure. That's very simple. But then how to get rid of the this wind noise compared, it should still you know, detect what you are saying. That's where the digital signal processing comes. Okay, then if you get rid of that one, there are still a couple of things. Shot noise. Ah, oh, wow. We had this analog system here. If there are any current, and yes, there are some current. <laughs> uh, you have battery. So, battery drains out always too fast, so it, there must be some current uh, flowing to it. Uh, that's the shot noise. Uh, so basically, larger the current you have, more uh, 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 noise you have on, on the... Uh, noise you have, in, um, and basically that comes from the fact that uh, charge carriers are electrons and in semiconductor holes. Every time you have an electron, there is also a cross-body hole. If there's a, a, a current, it means basically that, let's see, elect if electron goes that way, the hole doesn't go anywhere, but the, it, the electron here drops here, and then there'll be a hole here. So fundamentally, you have two times the uh, uh, electronic electron uh, charge moving when the current goes uh, uh, on, on a uh, semiconductor. Then, of course, Johnson noise in electronics. Well, this doesn't require any uh, current go, uh, flow, but it's basically just random thermal movement of charge carriers in conductors. And those other things you cannot well, you just have to live with them. Um, okay. What kind of uh, random signals we have? So, so basically the distribution uh, in atomic level or, or nuclear level, it's usually we are dealing with the Poisson distribution. So it's basically rolling a dice kind of distribution on quantization kind of thing, quantized system. But however, with the higher numbers, almost anything follows the normal distribution. So that's also the uh, what we will be using on our uh, experiments as a random numbers. That, so the uh, natural noise, more or less, normal distribution.
Yep, he's too grim. Ha <laughs> ha. You went through the statistics. That's the uh, distribution of the different values you get out of that um, out of the uh, uh, data. Ha. Ha. So statistical analysis of the of this random number gives you basically well this is also very important information it shows how the signals actually are varying and this this was the uh, normally distributed with a zero mean and uh, uh, deviation of one okay of variance of one mm. Okay, when we are talking about six sigma, it will be those values here. So 99 percent and 97 was it. Values will hit that range. Um, some tools. So, so basically, the histogram was one tool. Then there is also the correlation. So cross-correlation is actually a measure of similarity between signals. So have you gone through the uh, correlation on the math classes? Maybe. Correlation. Does it ring a bell? Here is nodding. Okay. <laughs> Good. So um, I might actually have an exercise for that. But, but anyways, the uh, correlation. Finding the similarity, and all the correlation is is actually calculating the self similarity, meaning that it, is there similar sections on signal. For example, auto correlating a uh, sinusoid with a lot of noise would concentrate the energy on this uh, on this um, mm -hmm. sinusoid. Um, some examples on the uh, applications of correlation. There's the uh, accuracy grader, uh, shorter, so to speak. So basically, you just have a sound source transmit, for example, chirp signal, and listen the same signal with the microphone from the near the loudspeaker, and then whatever reflects back, it reflects back with a time de delay. If you run the autocorrelation, it should tell you information how far was the uh, reflecting object. So that's the uh, basic basic um, uh, principle of, of radar. Okay. Another tool, convolution. It's almost like correlation, but with uh, basically shifted uh, inverse time. And linear filtering is based on the convolution. So it is actually the convolution. And well, nice formulas, right? Uh, that actually is a marking my marking for Fourier transformation. So if you Fourier transform a signal and the impulse response multiply the complex conjugate of that one with that one, meaning that you are basically uh, matching or not matching, but waiting. Okay, now I need to uh, need this one. Now I need that one. So the fundamental of convolution is that you would have the signal spectrum, whatever that is. I, I, I always draw only the half, 
one half of it, and then you would have the uh, that uh, filter uh, frequency response, for example, like this. You multiply these uh, uh, together, so basically this would reduce these higher, higher spectrum values and you actually are having a filter. So that was the spectrum of the signal. This is a spectrum of the filter. And spe spectrum times spectrum. It's just, you know, weighting the different uh, uh, frequency components. Then you take the uh, inverse Fourier transformation, done. Uh, or thus a linear convolution between the the uh, uh, input signal and the impulse response of the system. You have a question? Uh, yeah, that's the uh, mark, my marking for linear convolution. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this asterisk, is small asterisk, is actually complex conjugate. This is small. Uh, small and it's the uh, superscript and this is bigger asterisk. Sometimes the linear convolution is marked like that or like that or like that. <laughs> and yeah, yes, yes, yes. This is on uh, frequency space. This is on on time space. Uh, yep, yeah. complex conjugate of Fourier transform of that one uh, times this. Yep, yeah. yes, complex plane. So frequency space. Yes. All right. Um. Wow. Signal to noise ratio. Power, signal divided by power, noise, you take 10 base logarithm, multiply by 10. Okay, uh, how to calculate it for a, a any signal? If you know, know the signals, well, basically it's the uh, variance is directly proportional to power. Variance is, well, Practically, is, is energy of the signal on on that? Or hey, wait a minute, no, it's it's average power. Yes, so this is average power of the signal. Period. <laughs> so that's how to calculate that. All right, power spectrum. Um, power spectrum is basically a picture of, well, that one here, and it shows the um, signal power in, in different frequency components. Uh, and the easiest way to calculate it using the uh, Fourier transformation, when we have discrete uh, time signals, then we have discrete Fourier transformation. And if we are lucky and we have two to power of uh, n samples, well, we are always lucky since you can actually decide how many samples are you using. So you can use the fast Fourier transformation. So fast Fourier transformation is one, well, that's the fast way of calculating district Fourier transformation, but only if you have two to power of n samples. Okay, a couple of lines of octave there. All right. Ha. Looks like I have sampled 50 hertz signal. My sample rate was 1,000 samples per second. And this is what comes out. So how come we do not have the... Uh, Uh, 
How come we do not have spectrum like this? But we have a spectrum like that. That's because of Gibbs phenomena. Or mathematically what I have done is, well, I didn't have, I was in a hurry. I couldn't wait for ever. <laughs> so the frequency, fine. I have this 50 hertz signal like that. I fixed number of samples here. Maybe maybe 1024, maybe. Um, uh, okay, so I took only that part of the signal. Uh, N is something 1024, maybe. I don't remember it exactly. But what I actually did here, I kind of forced the signal to go zero there when I did the sampling. Mathematically, I did window function times that one in time space. So my window is now a square shaped win window. And when you have a square shape window, what is the Fourier transform of square shape? Sink. That one actually goes. Mm, or well, that's funny way of doing it. But anyways, that that's the fundamental effect. What is going on there? So we have the uh, multiplication in time is the convolution in frequency. Same as, you know, the previous page, we had the, uh, uh, here, we have the convolution in time and multiplication in frequency. Same thing happens here. We have the multiplication in time, convolution in frequency. So that's why when we are taking a window like that, it gives you kind of uh, that kind of envelope for the uh, spectrum. Good. More about spectrum analysis. So this is basically the, the basis is the Fourier transformation. It gives you the uh, spectral uh, uh, combination of what kind of uh, power you have in each fre frequency of the signal. Uh, but uh, spectrum analysis basically there's also the spectrogram which is simply a time series of spectra. Uh, this is a chirp signal meaning that we have a signal where the uh, uh, frequencies actually changing linearly, starting from, well, in this case, zero. But anyways, it's uh, the frequency. Uh, as you can see from here, it, it goes um, faster uh, frequency when the time passes. And in spectrogram, actually, you can see it as a linear, linear line. So this is done such that you have this one spectrum, or maybe I should actually draw another picture. Mm. Yeah, just for fun. Spectrogram, so we have the time based signal here, like that. 
Then you start taking samples. First sample. And do the Fourier spectrum and draw it basically this way. Mm. Oh, maybe that way. So the frequency is on this scale. This is still the time. But that's zero and that's the highest something. So highest signal rate. So maybe like that. So this is the uh, first spectrum. Second, usually with the overlap. All right, there and do 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 like that, and then third one. One, two, three. Third one would go here, maybe something like that. Okay. And instead of making these graphs, you actually do a color coding. So this actually is uh, the, the, this is one single spectrum calculated from that point, that uh, piece of information. And uh, the color coding shows basically the uh, contour of this way. Simple. Okay, so color coding instead of that. That's how the spectrogram is done. And this is nice way of actually starting uh, recognizing, for example, voice. Voice is not good for doing any time correlation. Next time you speak the same thing, uh, you have the similar frequency components, but even if, if they are a little bit off, then you get zero correlation. But if you do the spectrogram and start correl uh, correlating these kind of, uh, say, images to other images, you can find the uh, different parts of the speech. Not time correlation, but correlation in spectrum. Ah, good. <laughs> I don't know you, but I had a lot of fun. <laughs> so, uh, so basically, uh, this was the uh, first part, and just right on time, <laughs> exactly right on time. So, so the basically, I have also this kind of uh, anonymous questionnaire. You can test yourself. I'm not checking the results. You can check yourself how well you understood the stuff what I just presented to you. And uh, now we will have one hour uh, break and then we'll continue with the lab tutorial followed by the exercise, exercise, exercise. All right, thank you. <laughs>